Welcome back. So on this week's video, I'm going to do a little bit of basic math, I guess I'll call it, just to show you roughly how I work out the the wood density and how much weight I need to add to a lure. So this week I'm going to make up on a couple of little lipless crankbaits. All right, I'm going to draw some stuff on the whiteboard. Hopefully I don't mess up my maths because I'm not real good at maths. Alright, something similar to that. I'm going to make it overall 60 millimeters long. All right, so I'm going to make it 60 mil nose to tail. It's going to be about 33 mil top to bottom. Being a lipless crank, I'm going to have all the weight probably sitting up here in the head somewhere. Up in there. Piece of wood I'm using this week. Again, I'm going to use this Maranti because it's nice to shape. Might bite me in the butt though because I don't know whether I'll be able to get enough weight in that head to make this thing sink. Obviously lipless crankbaits, majority of them sink, they should sink. So, I'll try that and if that doesn't work I'll have a look around in my scrap pile and see what else I've got. Still got a bit of that acacia, that's pretty heavy. Maybe I'll end up using a bit of that, but for now we're going to run with the Maranti. So to work out the density of the wood, first got to get the weight the wood mass six eight point seven three grams next we need to get the measurements so this block of wood I don't know whether that'll focus on that or not We got 137, it's probably about 0.2, mil, 0.2 millimeters over, but I'm not going to worry about that for this. That's by 66 on the dot. This is pre dressed timber, so it should be fairly square. Sixty-six millimeters tall. I think these were 18 mil. Yeah, 18 mil thick. So to work out the volume. Sixty-six times one thirty-seven times eighteen. So I've pre done the maths on that. One sixty-two seven. 56. So, to make this calculation work, we need to work it out into cubic centimeters. So, divide that number by a thousand equals 162.756 centimeters cubed. And get our density, take our mass, divide it by our volume. So, mass, volume, 0.73 over 162.756 gives us. 0 0.422 0 0.422 It's actually a little bit lighter than I thought it was We're going to have to add a fair amount of lead to make this thing sink hmm. 
we'll run with it see what I can do so I've printed up a second sheet just basic templates I'm going to cut them out and glue them on and we'll start cutting cut them out we'll shape them up a bit and we'll reweigh them and see how much see how much lead we need to add to make make them sink see if I can fit it in there while we wait let's have a look at this I got some mail today start with these because they're hanging out and you can see them so I don't really have a great deal of need for 1.6 mil stainless rods so I just bought a small pack of 10 they cost a fortune so I bought a small amount of them I think they're over a dollar each but there for a future project coming up got some big single inline hooks coming got some, so I think they're 7.2 mil yeah pretty sure the 7.2 mil heavy duty split rings so that'll be interesting what else you got in his box you say I just got a couple of little little extra colours. I like the, the yellows and the greens, especially when you contrast them with like a, a black or something. I haven't really got any decent oranges, so I bought this hopefully. Hopefully this will work, especially on this type of lure. Maybe like a little bit of an orange blush around the belly or something. Might look good. This one, a bit of metal colour in the chrome. That'll be good. I've got another order coming with some candy colours in it, so I'm trying to do some some marbling, I think, across the back of some some lures. All right, scale model to supply colour shifts, blue aqua green. Don't know whether I'll be able to get that on the camera or not, but it's hard to see. Maybe there. Oh, it's hard to see, but hyperspace color shift on the scale model supply. Abyss, deep purple, blue, orange, gold. You can see the gold there. Through to orange, through to purple. That'll be interesting. Stocked up on a couple of my small hooks. I think they're a, a size 8 treble. Very small. And they are a number 6 treble. And just for the smaller freshwater type lures. <coughs> and then, got some wings. I've never made a lure with wings before, so I'll bugger it. I'll grab a set while I'm ordering hooks and whatnot. Grab a set and I'll give one of them a shot soon. That'll be interesting. What just comes as a kit? So yeah, pretty keen to try them out.
All right. So your typical lipless crank. Widest part of the lure is going to be about there. Sort of similar to that. Obviously not so rough and hand drawn, but I'm literally that line tie will be about there, so It'll be the thickest part of the lure. Alright, I'm gonna mark these up. The overall shapes can be something similar to that. Alright guys, we've got the lures pretty much shaped, nothing done to them yet, but we'll get a weight on them so we can work out how much lead we need to put in. 6.04 grams, 6.14 grams, 6.23 grams, so we'll use that guy to work it out, he's there. To be the most buoyant, so we'll weigh them all off that. All right, so the shaped lure, call it shaped. Six point two three grams. <clears throat> so to work out how much weight we need. Divide that by our gravity. Eight 
knuckles, 14.76 grams. So that 14.76 grams should, in theory, put us neutrally buoyant in fresh water. So I'm probably going to add maybe, uh, I might take more like a 16 grams, what's that? 1.4. Maybe about 10%, maybe. A little bit more than 10%. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. So, including hardware and all that, bang on. 10 grams that I need to add to it. So I'll chuck these back down on the table and we'll get all the hardware and whatnot sorted and we'll see how much that weighs, see how much lead we need. A little tray on there. Can't remember which one it was. Was that one? We've got number six trebles. Two of them. 10 millimeter glass eyes. Two of them, obviously. Some small rings. I might put the next size up, but I'll use these ones anyway. Small rings. We need our three twist wires. So what's that get us to nine? In these lures, I'm going to do something I haven't really done before, but I'm going to give it a shot piece of stainless steel drinking straw and put it straight through his side there and put some ball bearings in it. So we got one of them. What are we thinking? Maybe three ball bearings? They're only tiny. Probably like 1.5 mil maybe. Three of them brings us to 9.73. I'll write that down before the scale turns off. Alright. 9.73 and we had to get up to 16.23. So a number two ball sinker. Should I reckon that'll be enough? One ball sinker. Yeah, I'm going to do that, because once I put two coats of epoxy on it, it's going to be probably closer to 17 grams. And the problem is I've got to try and figure out how to get all that lead in there. Do a bit of stuffing around, but I've drilled a big hole and sort of opened it up. I'm going to have to resort to melting it. I just can't fit that sinker in there. Alright, so this is my extremely crude lead melting. It's just a piece of aluminium with a little pore spout and it's been belted with a couple of bits of stuff, so it's a spoon. Kitchen blowtorch. So with this little rattle chamber, I'm going to have the um, tie eyes sort of there and there coming towards each other. Not favourable, but I want to leave myself room. So right here in the centre. Really do a great big hole through your, your near finished lure. So 
to avoid blowouts. I'm not drilling the whole way through. I'm just drilling until the tip pokes through, then coming back the other way. Alright, there he is. Hollow-sided lipless crankbait. <clears throat> if you're wondering where that fourth lower is, I've already stuffed around with it to make sure this is going to work. Just a piece of plastic coated cardboard. Something for the baking soda to sit on. Plastic coated so the super glue doesn't soak through it and wreck the chamber. Super thin. Well, I'll we'll flip them over, drop the balls in, we'll seal them up. Sounds a bit nicer than this one. This one I've got two big ball bearings in there. It's just very, I don't know, mechanical sounding I'll call it. But we'll see how this one goes after I seal him. While we're stuffing around with this baking soda, we'll fill these lead holes up. Sound. Yeah, that's good enough to me. Yeah, 
I'll get these guys cleaned up. We'll give them their final sand and we'll put the um, tie eyes in. It's just a roll of galvanized garden tie wire. I'm just making little hangers and dip these in poly. Alright guys, so, that's the three coats of poly on them, alright guys, we've got the three coats of poly on now, I've obviously glued in all the twist eyes and that, you've seen that, I didn't talk through it, nothing special about that, I think I cut them down to about 20mm long glued them in with the medium black super glue uh, apart from that the super glue and baking soda glued in those little rattles smaller ball bearings are a little bit quieter but they're a nicer noise those big ball bearings are just they're a loud knock so we'll see how that goes this video is going pretty long so I'm going to edit Decide whether I split it for part one up till now. Part two will be painting, swim test, fishing. Also, still got to go out and test that transom mount for the kayak. It's been blowing its ass off the last couple of days, so I haven't had a chance. Alrighty. Catches. <laughs>